and we'll go and knock on some doors and then we'll find, oh, somebody's been evicted because the landlord says they need the room for the caretaker or somebody is leaving because the landlord is renovating the common areas and the noise and the dust and the water cutoffs are too much for them. Or some people, uh, some guy who maybe pays every two weeks and the new landlord doesn't like that so he picks them for non-payment of rent. And then another guy might uh, have to leave because they've changed to the key to a key fob and they're demanding a $50 replacement fee that he can't afford because he's on welfare. Um, and other people are leaving because they've been paid to go, 400 to $2,000 in my experience. So these are all actual examples. The point is the landlord get, gets rid of people before their rooms are renovated. He doesn't go to them and say, we have to renovate your room, you need to get out. Take the Clifton Hotel. Fifty people were gone before uh, CAP and First United even got there to talk to the remaining 25. So basically, we're afraid that your change to the definition of conversion won't stop the renovations. In fact, as we said before, keeping Section E as it is and interpreting it to mean a repair that has a material effect on the enjoyment by residents of the unit could actually be used to prevent renovations. I also don't understand why you added the part to Section 5 about who has to pay $125,000. Abby says it isn't a change, but if it isn't a change, why is it being added? So it's this part, it says, but only that you have to pay the hundred, the landlord would have to pay the hundred twenty-five thousand, and then the addition is, but only if the designated room ceases to be a designated room and is otherwise not replaced. So while you're increasing the amount, you're drastically reducing the occasions where you can charge it, and giving away the biggest power you have to negotiate with landlords. Anyway, this is what I'm wondering. So no wonder Jeffrey Howes, who is the right man, hand man for the biggest renovator in the downtown east side, said that that change won't affect them because they're not taking their SRO units out of the SRA bylaw. So there's another problem, and that is when the city does negotiate with the landlord, like, for example, at the Low Young Court or the American Hotel or even places like Atira or the Asia Hotel, you end up with deals where they only have to pay a third or even less, only have to have a third or even less of the units at welfare rate. So we're still losing two-thirds of the units. So if the city continues giving only a handful of welfare rate units when it negotiates, what's the point of negotiating? So there's a lot of things in this. My big fear is that homelessness is really on the upswing. This year you had 600 and some units opening up and your uh, homeless count went down by 57. Next year there's no new social housing buildings opening up, none. This would be a huge deplorable headline. And you're losing the quality in of 157 units. So if your SRO bylaw saves even 100 units, there's still 200 gone and we're going to have it, an increase of over 300 homeless people next year just because of all the factors that are happening. So I could say more about what you can do about this. There's lots of things you can do, my goodness knows. So if someone wants to ask me a question, I will answer it. Thank you very much. Elsa Carr does have a question. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks so much, Ms. Lawson, for 